Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' It's D. About to react to this vid by Sunny V2. This is the dumbest lottery winners of all time. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> when you come up on a large amount of money, if you don't know how to properly manage that, you are going to go broke very, very soon. So, you know, you, you have to educate yourself. You have to acquire some type of financial literacy before you uh, acquire that much money. If I knew that I won the lottery, I would immediately uh, look for financial advisors. I mean, I already have a certain level of financial literacy, but I'm saying if I didn't, if I didn't have any at all, I would consult with the financial advisor. I would do a lot of research online and watch videos, you know, to try to learn how to properly manage my money. These people don't do that. <laughs> they, they go straight to, to the dealership, buy hella cars, hella houses, hella Rolexes, and it's like, you, you broke again. Anyway, let's see uh, what was happening now. Let's watch. From accidentally throwing a three million pound lottery ticket in the bin to spending an entire 16 million dollar prize in under 90 days. These are the absolute dumbest lottery winners of all time, beginning with Jose Antonio Quartok, no. who almost lost his entire lottery fortune after getting someone else to claim the money for him. You see, when Jose won the $750,000 jackpot back in 2010, he was living in- You also gotta consider that after taxes, you're not getting what you think you're getting, all right? Taxes, they fuck you. In the ass. No lube. Okay? It's very depressing how much we pay in taxes in the US illegally. So Jose asked his boss to claim the prize on his behalf as he feared he couldn't claim the money without potentially facing legal trouble and deportation. This worked Ooh, out perfectly until him? Jose's boss began to falsely state that he was the one who had actually purchased the ticket. Taking legal action against his boss was risky given Jose wasn't supposed to be in the country at all. However, given he had security camera footage of him purchasing the ticket, Jose did so and was able to prove that he was the rightful owner to the $750,000 prize. Only 250000 this went to taxes, another 250000 was spent on court fees, and throughout the legal process, Jose was jailed for drunk driving and was deported back to Guatemala no. as soon as he won the court case. However, at least Jose Antonio Quartop got to keep some of his winnings, as Denise Rossi wasn't so fortunate. When Denise won a jackpot of $1.3 back in 1996, she'd been married mm. to Thomas Rossi That's for over 25 years, yet their relationship was apparently lacking in transparency, as Denise didn't tell her husband about the win and instead filed for divorce only 11 days after buying the lucky ticket. Ooh. I was afraid to tell Thomas because I knew he would try to take the money away from me. I went to the lottery commission office and told them I was married but contemplating divorce. They told me to file before I got my first check, which I did. Denise was initially successful in hiding the money from her now ex-husband as for a whole two years after their divorce, Thomas had no idea that Denise had ever won the lottery. However, in May 1999, a letter was sent to Thomas's home address asking if Denise was interested in a lump sum buyout of her lottery winnings. This was the first Thomas knew about the lottery prize. He confirmed that Denise was a winner with the California lottery, and given they were still married at the time of the win, Thomas launched a lawsuit stating that he was entitled to half of the prize money. Mm. The judge specifically found that Denise's failure to disclose the lottery winnings constituted fraud, oppression, yeah, you and can't malice, <laughs> and as a result, the trial court awarded Thomas 100% of the lottery winnings, which left Denise with less than nothing, considering she also had to pay for her oh, own legal Oh, that's fees. what you get for being and trifling that is really fucked up that's fucked up for you to even do that However, Denise's loss of 1.3 million was still nothing in comparison to Evelyn Adams. Dubbed the luckiest woman in America, Evelyn Adams became the first person in human history to win the lottery what? twice. Initially for 3.9 million in October 1985, 1.4 million only four Damn, months that's later. Damn, that's With so the much money of this back win then. Being approximately one in 17.3 trillion, Evelyn seemed to realize that she had no lottery luck left by stating that she was going to quit playing and instead began to buy various businesses including the convenience store where the lucky tickets had been purchased. While you could argue that this was a smart move, Evelyn still hadn't fixed her gambling problem, and instead of buying more lottery tickets, she instead took the rest of her winnings to the Atlantic City casinos, where she lost her entire remaining fortune to the slot machines. Without any money left, her businesses failed one after the other, and by 2012, Evelyn was living in a trailer park, while stating to the media, winning the lottery isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Kelly Rogers likely had Girl. a similar outlook, as after winning over 
for 1.8 million pounds at the age of only 16. Her life was also ruined. Initially, Kelly stated, I will not go wild and spend loads. I'm going to take some advice and see an accountant. Hopefully, I will make us all comfortable. I want to help my family, but I won't change. I just want a normal home, nothing posh. I just want a normal car as well. However, as soon as she received the money, Kelly oh, instead spent 11,500 pounds on two boob jobs, 3,000 pounds on clothes, makeup, and tattoos, as well as 85,000 pounds on top of the range sports cars. Kelly spent a further 250,000 pounds on holidays to locations including Mexico and Euro Disney, 118,000 pounds on gifts to former boyfriends, 190,000 pounds in unreturned former loans to friends and family members, and 50,500 pounds on solicitors fees, all of which being purchased while she was still in high school. Kelly did make a few smart purchases such as an 180,000 pound bungalow and a 96,000 pound home for her mum. However, by the end of the year, Kelly was back to square one, being on welfare with only 2,000 pounds wow. left in her account. She since stated it was too much money for someone so young. Even if you say your life won't change, it does, and often not for the better. Yeah, I just wish I was a bit older at the time of winning it, because I think at 16, you're still just a child, and overnight, you've just got to grow up and become an Look what she said, cash didn't make me happy. And she was trying to chase happiness through, through buying all that shit. You got all the clothes you ever wanted, the cars, the vacations, and it's like, wait, <laughs> I'm still not happy. All right, let me go buy more shit. You still not happy. People don't understand this, and it they keep the the argument alive. Well, if I had it, it would buy happiness for me. No, it doesn't buy it for anybody. All right, once your basic needs are met, it does it does not buy you further happiness. All right, I will die on that hill. Adult. Which is probably she was why a she's kid, now an so. advocate for raising the UK's legal gambling age from 16 to 18. Kelly Rogers Girl, certainly spent her you. money poorly. However, at least she had the chance to spend it, as 25-year-old Amanda Clayton from Detroit was no longer alive by the end of her spending spree. When Amanda won the million-dollar jackpot back in 2011, it seemed as though her life had been changed overnight. However, her win quickly became controversial after the media learned that she was still collecting food stamps and benefit payments despite having won the lottery. Ooh. Detroit woman is now the second lotto winner in the state to keep taking food stamps after hitting it big and amanda clayton That's who won crazy. a million bucks and took home a seven hundred thousand dollar lump sum the 24 year old says even though she now owns two homes she figured she was still allowed to use a bridge car after being confronted about the behavior amanda had the following to say i thought that they would cut me off but since they didn't i thought maybe it was okay because i'm not working and shortly thereafter she was charged with two felony counts of welfare Ooh. fraud and was ordered to pay back the $5,500 worth of food stamps she received. While Amanda quickly paid the $5,500 back, she never got the chance to spend the rest of the money, as she only does. six months later she would unfortunately overdose in one of her two homes. He says oh. she was tormented by the fame and the problems that came with winning the lottery. Well, what's the point of having money if you're not going to have happiness? He says she didn't want the money anymore and bought things for her family and set up college funds for her children. He says she only had six $67,000 of her winnings left. The end to Amanda Clayton's story was somewhat unexpected. However, a two-second glance at Ryan McGee is more than enough to predict that this lottery win would eventually end in disaster. After winning £6.4 million pounds back in 2008 at the age of 27, Ryan was placed on the Sunday Times Top 100 Rich List for Young People. He purchased a luxury mansion in his home country of Ireland, which featured five bedrooms, an indoor swimming pool, a full champagne bar, and a two-car garage where he kept his brand new Ferrari 458 Italia. However, oh. as you might expect, this is where things began to go terribly. Only three years after buying the Ferrari... I only said per because I want a Ferrari. I used to want a McLaren, but now I want a Ferrari. It's going to be my next car. Mark my words. Ryan slipped off the road, crashing the car into a field, oh. mainly because he was driving in the snow. Locals were amazed Ryan was driving the Ferrari in that weather, especially when he had a more suitable Range Rover he could use. The Ferrari was not understood to be running on winter tyres, which, while costing around £4,400, hugely boost grip and handling in icy conditions. Ryan's property development business then dissolved, which was accompanied by a divorce from his wife and the sale of his luxury home. Mm. Then, two years later, Ryan McGee was pulled over driving an uninsured Ford 
Port focused without a license. Yeah, However, true. the most interesting part is that he had to claim legal aid, which is a service for those who are unable to afford a lawyer. Now, Ryan McGee was a complete idiot with his money. However, he still looks like Albert Einstein when compared to Martin Tot. When Martin and his wife Kay won three million pounds back in 2001, they didn't go in to claim the prize because, well, they had no idea that they were winners. They purchased a ticket in passing, completely forgotten about it, and would only come to realize that they were the winners after hearing about the unclaimed prize over six months later. The main problem was that at some point, the ticket had been misplaced or thrown out completely. Despite frantically searching, the pair couldn't find their ticket, but were sure they had won because the jackpot numbers matched the ones they used every week. Computer records in their local lot proved Kay really had purchased the ticket and the thrilled pair rushed to tell lottery organiser Camelot to claim their prize. But they fell victim to a little no rule stating lost tickets must be reported within 30 mm. days. After 45 days of deliberation, Camelot told the devastated couple that they would not be collecting the jackpot and as a result the couple's marriage eventually came to an end. Oh. We'd only known each other for two years and the lottery ordeal quickly highlighted our differences. All we did was bicker. Sadly, both of us agreed we should split and Kay moved out. Mm. Martin yeah, seems to have convinced himself that losing the ticket ended up being a good thing, having stated, for a long time I lost sight of who I was and what I believed in, but I can honestly say I'm glad I didn't get the three million now. There is no guarantee it would have brought me happiness, I mean, and if there's anyone else who would have agreed with this statement, it definitely would have been the most miserable lottery winner of all time, <laughs> William really? Post. When William won a $16.2 million jackpot back Sheesh. in 1988, yeah. he had just $2.46 in his bank account and was able to purchase the lucky ticket by selling a ring for $40 to a local pawn shop. This, in conjunction with the time he'd spent in jail for cashing invalid checks, highlighted William Post's awful money management skills and acted as foreshadowing for how poorly his lottery win was eventually going to be spent. Only 84 days after receiving the $16.2 million, William Post had spent the entire fortune on a boat, a lease for a restaurant in Florida, a used car lot as well as a private jet. However, even after all of the money had been spent, Post took on a further $500,000 loan to purchase a mansion in Oil City, Pennsylvania. The problem was that William hadn't actually purchased the original ticket himself and had rather given the money to his girlfriend who had bought the winning ticket for him. Because of this, she was able to successfully sue him for one third of the winnings, meaning the Post now owed $5.4 million to his ex-girlfriend from the $16.2 million that he no longer had. Since Post was unable to make this payment, the judge ordered that his bank account be frozen until he was able to come up with the money. However, before he was able to sell enough stuff to pay the 5.4 million, okay. William was arrested and ordered to serve a 6 to 24 month prison term for an assault charge from 6 years prior. Toward the end of his life, Post was on his 7th mm. marriage with over a million dollars in debt and was getting by on food stamps and a job paying $450 per month. However, William Post still doesn't have the craziest lottery win story of all time. That title goes to Andrew Jackson Whitaker, whose life would change forever after winning 315 million back in oh, 2002. Okay. Unlike almost everyone else in this video, Whitaker was actually quite successful prior to winning the lottery, having built up a net worth of over 17 million with the assistance of his construction company. And while this would imply that he was in a position to manage a large lottery win, this isn't what would happen. Whitaker instantly donated 10% of the winnings to churches, Christian groups, and spent a further 14 million establishing the Jack Whitaker Foundation, which provided free food and clothing for low income families in West Virginia. Obviously, you're doing God's work with all this money. Yes, I am. I'm helping a lot of people and I plan to help a lot more. He then drove back to the convenience store where he had purchased the ticket before giving the clerk a $44,000 check, a $123,000 house, and a brand new Jeep Cherokee, what? which was followed by Whitaker buying himself a Lamborghini in which he'd drive around his neighborhood throwing money out of the window. Yeah. After flaunting this wealth, his Lamborghini was broken into where thieves stole $545,000 in cash. However, oh, this apparently wasn't much of a wake-up call mm -hmm. as his car was then broken into for the second time, resulting in the loss of a further $200,000 cash. Mm. Jack Whitaker's granddaughter passed away, his daughter then passed away, which was followed by a divorce with his wife. And now you've lost your granddaughter? You're about to be divorced from your wife? Where does this ever end? Leading him to state that he had lost everything. I pretty much lost everything I held dear in my life. You got lots of money. Money is money, money has never meant anything to me. You have to have money to exist in this world, but money, money doesn't rule the world. Money, money is not what makes people happy. And that he wished he had never Everybody purchased the lottery saying. ticket in the first place. My wife had said she wished that she tore the ticket up. Well, I wish that we had torn the ticket up too. I just don't like what I've become.
Dang, this sucks that they didn't know how to manage their money. But at least they all learned a valuable lesson that money did not make them happy because that is what we're told and we spend our entire lives chasing that, chasing more money, chasing a better job to pay us more money because we think, okay, I'm going to be happy when I make this amount of money. I'm going to be happy when I get this better job and I can buy this and do that. It, it's it's not going to make you happier. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, these people kept blaming the money though. <laughs> They're like, I wish I never, you know, won the lottery. It caused a lot of problems. No, nigga, you caused the problems. Somebody told you to buy 10 Ferraris and houses and spend it on clothes and hoes. That that was your decision. The fuck? Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.